Hey folks, I'm Chris and I'm your Commander Mechanic. The Warhammer 40k precons are coming soon, and there are a ton of great new cards printed within. And I'm going to break down some of the best new potential commanders inside the set so you can know which singles you want to pick up. And if you do want to pick up any singles or even pre-order the precons themselves, head over to my friends at Harry Tarantula, linked in the description. First time visitors can use my code CMDR5 for 5% off your whole purchase or CMDR Mechanic to support the channel. But be sure to grab your orders soon, they are in hot demand. There are a total of 24 brand new legends in these Warhammer 40k precons, meaning there's a lot of potential for new commanders. Generally, these are very strong options that range from generically good like Marius Kalgar to niche and specific like Dearson Karn. But in either case, we have lots of new potential brews on the horizon. But first, as always, an honorable mention to the legends that fit in the 99 of decks more often than not. These are monocolored roll filler legends like Illuminor Zerus, providing mono black decks with another great mana generator, Karn the Betrayer, who fits perfectly in Chaos or Group Slug decks, or Celestine the Living Saint, surprisingly not an angel, but a human that can fit in tribal decks and life gain decks for some amazing longevity. But who are my top 5 build around legends? Which ones are prime for their own decks? At number 5 we have Death Leaper Terror Weapon. This 4 mana 3-3 three, three has flash and haste. The most interesting part though is that it gives all creatures you control that entered the battlefield this turn double strike. That to me immediately reads as puzzles to solve. How do you build your deck around flash creatures or haste creatures that can enter the battlefield and immediately attack? My mind went right to dash creatures like Rogavon or Lightning Berserker, creatures you can reuse over and over again, giving them double strike each time they attack. Or, even better, how about effects that make hasty tokens like Rite of the Raging Storm? A 5-3 double strike haste on each of your turns is pretty good. And with this color combination's ability to give keywords like haste and trample to creatures, well, Death Leaper decks can be pretty deadly. The flash aspect is pretty exciting too, functioning as a surprise double striking blocker. While it's not ideal to make a potential attacker a surprise blocker, double strike on an ambush viper is basically a removal spell. I'm looking forward to building this guy and seeing what you're brewing too. At number 4 we have Trazen the Infinite. It's kind of right there in the name. This guy was built to go infinite. He's a necrotic ooze, a classic combo win con that can be in your command zone, except instead of copying creature abilities, it's artifact abilities. Though that's not to count out artifact creatures, after all they are still artifacts. The classic combo of Phyrexian Devourer and Walking Ballista makes him infinite in the command zone, not needing haste and ignoring combat. It's easy to tutor these cards to your graveyard with an Entomb or Buried Alive, making Trazen prime combo deck material. He also creates infinite mana pretty easily as well. A Staff of Domination and anything like a Soul Ring is infinite colorless mana in your graveyard, though Trazen will need to be unaffected by summoning sickness in order to tap for mana. But regardless, this is a commander that will easily just go infinite. He costs 6, which is a lot, but coming down and winning the game isn't hard for him. Just pump that infinite mana into a Walking Ballista, already in the deck, or a Torment of Hailfire and it's game over. Putting infinite in his name was definitely foretelling of how he's going to end game. At number 3 we have Inquisitor Eisenhorn. This 4 mana Demir legend can do pseudo delver of secret stuff, where flipping an instant or sorcery off the top of your library as your first card drawn each turn makes you a legendary 4-4 flying demon. Not bad if you can manipulate the top card of your library, but to me the next line is the most important. When Inquisitor Eisenhorn deals combat damage to a player, investigate that many times. So connecting with base Inquisitor lets you investigate twice. As soon as you start Voltroning him up though, that's a lot of clues. And anything that makes a load of clues is perfect for Academy Manufacturer. Turning two clues into two clues, two food, and two treasure is great, but when that starts to be four of each, six of each, ten of each, look out because we're getting value. Suiting the Inquisitor up with an aqueous form and a few equipment is the easiest route to more resources than god. Mana, cards, life, it is so good. Let's not discount the potential for aristocrat builds too, 
Potentially getting a 4-4 Legendary Demon each turn is at least one dies trigger, kind of like an Ophiomancer in the Command Zone. But also, we could use a March of the Machines to turn all those clue tokens into creatures that immediately die, and that can result in a lot of triggers to take opponents out with, while shutting off their access to treasures and other artifact tokens. I think there's potential here for some weird brews, and I'm looking forward to seeing them. At number 2, we have Bellacor the Dark Master. This is a Grixis Demon Tribal Commander, something people have been asking for for a while, myself included. Getting access to three colors, a draw engine in the command zone, and a strong central theme is awesome. This 6 mana 6-5 six flyer draws you at least one card at the cost of one life when he enters, but that scales to the number of demons you control. He also provides a Terror of the Peaks, or Dragon Tempest style effect, when a demon enters the battlefield under your control, and that's where he turns from a value engine into a win con. Demons like Dreadfeast Demon can make multiple copies of itself, throwing 6 damage around for each copy that enters the battlefield. And you can use blink effects from blue like Essence Flux or colorless effects like Conjurer's Closet to deal some serious damage each turn or refill your hand. This is a big win for anybody that is looking to build a Liliana's Contract deck but just couldn't make it work in mono black. And in my opinion, the best part is that Bellicor here could easily be printed into a main magic set, even if it's with a Stranger Things style setting shift. There's nothing keeping him 40k exclusive. What do you think? Interested in building a demon deck now? And finally at number 1 we have Commissar Severina Rain. This 3 mana 2-2 two -two human soldier is everything you want from a black and white aristocrat go wide deck. When she attacks, she domes each opponent for the number of other attacking creatures, allowing each 1-1 one, one to deal a total of 3 damage when they connect or not. And she's a draw engine, life gain enabler, and sack outlet. For 2 mana, you can sacrifice another creature to gain 2 life and draw a card. She can come down early or late and generate a ton of value. She can ensure your tiny 1-1 one, one creatures do a lot of work, and she can enable all your life gain effects or aristocrat effects while refilling your hand. There are a ton of ways you could build a deck with her at the helm, and all of them are incredibly effective and lacking a really versatile commander in the black-white color identity. For that alone, she gets my top spot. And honestly, while the overall iconography of the character is off-putting, she's everything most black-white decks want in commander. And, much like Bellicor, she can potentially be reprinted into regular magic continuity with a Stranger Things style setting shift. Unlike some others in the precons, she doesn't make a start tokens and isn't a Tyranid or Necron, so she can fit perfectly fine. What do you think of the Warhammer 40k Commander precons? Overall, I'm incredibly excited and I've ordered a set for myself too. There's just too much good stuff in them. Be sure to subscribe because later this week I will look at goodies for in the 99 of your decks. Also, be sure to check out my sponsor Moxfield. Moxfield is the best deck building platform in the world, and I'll be using it to make all the sweet new brews from Warhammer 40k. The cards are already available for you to start building with. Head over to my profile, linked below, and follow me while you're there. And be sure to check out these other videos from the channel too. Liking, sharing, and subscribing really helps me out. Of course, as always folks, be kind to each other, and good luck, and have fun.